uh, uh, welcome to the uh, co uh, cotton section. I was a little bit uh, concerned when I saw how small this room was, but I guess that's proportional to the acreage we have in the Delta right now. But hopefully, hopefully uh, you'll see hear some things today that will uh, will be encouraging. Uh, certainly, uh, and, and I know all of you come to hear Nathan, so that's the real reason we're here. So uh, Nathan's going to uh, speak first on the conventional side of conventional, uh, practical side of conventional cotton production, then I'm going to uh, follow that up with some aspects of uh, how we're combining. I think we're, there's been some, a major change in the last year, two years, and uh, combining fiber quality and yield, which I think has some very positive uh, aspects on our cut production. And we'll leave the lights up on this. As I understand, this is being videotaped, and they ask us to leave the lights in the room the same way. So nobody can take a nap. That's the, that's the negative part of that. So, Nathan. Uh, All right. My name is Nathan Reed. I'm a farmer in Mariana, Arkansas, uh, just uh, west of here, southwest of here, about 50 miles. Uh, cotton farmer. Uh, I guess the last few years I've been forced to produce other things, but I still consider myself primarily a cotton farmer. Uh, a few years ago, uh, I guess our state support committee, I've been active in it, and we really pushed to try to get some conventional varieties out there to have an option. Uh, the problem is Dr. Rowan did his job and got some out there, but people still weren't planting them that much. Uh, so I kind of felt the responsibility being the one out there screaming to at least uh, give conventional cotton a, a try. Uh, so I guess two years ago was my first year planting it. Uh, I've been exclusively uh, University of Arkansas 222. There's a lot of varieties out there. Actually, uh, Mr. Youngman is here with Seed Source Genetics who does 222. Uh, I haven't tried any other varieties. Uh, 222 was bred for this area. By Dr. Borland, and it's it's been uh, really good so far, and and I've been very happy with it. So that's what I'm sticking with. Uh, I was going to try to kind of give a breakdown of cost versus in this talk versus uh, the GMO cotton, and not I'm not anti-GMO by any means. Uh, I'm still growing quite a bit of GMO cotton, but uh, the conventional cotton has worked on my farm, and it's it's allowed me to stay in in larger acreage cotton production and still make a profit. Uh, so I kind of went back through my notes and got expenses from last year. Rather than just adding up my total cost per acre, which that varies, uh, I guess, on every farm, I kind of looked at the cost differences per acre. Um, so I guess we'll start. Uh, the UA222, 235,000 count seed bag. I think uh, retail on it's $124 a bag. And then uh, that actually comes with the fungicide treatment on it. Uh, Gaucho's $25 a bag of treatment costs somewhere in there. Uh, so my total cost is around $150 a bag. At 48,000 seed, that's I, I variable rate seed cotton, but generally we're somewhere between 47 and 50,000 when it's all said and done, depending on if I put heavier land in cotton production or lighter soils. Uh, so my seed cost is around $30, $30 an acre. Uh, versus, and again, not knocking because you get a lot of stuff with these other varieties, but just, just uh, I guess the rough math in our area, I know technology fees are different in different areas. Uh, the, the same $48,000 or 48,000 count seed count, approximately with your, your sewing board, your GLB2 is $135 an acre and your, your phytogen is somewhere around $130 an acre for the wide strike roundup. Uh, again, uh, I, I still plant plenty of these over here, but is a pure cost comparison, and that's where you're you're, you're essentially starting out $100 ahead when you put the seed, or $100 an acre ahead when you put conventional seed in the ground. So obviously, we're going to make that up uh, somewhat, but uh, it sure is nice. The, the thing that I really like about it is, by the time I burn down uh, and spray all my residuals early and plant the seed just in straight inputs in an acre of cotton, I have around $200 an acre before the seed ever comes up. And that's a lot of risk right now with the cotton prices. With this, I have 70 to $80 an acre. So you're talking about a third the expense out there. Uh, you do catch up, but it's not so front loaded. And I found, I hate to say I, I don't farm like this, but if you do have a, a catastrophe or you see 
along the way that you're going to have a hiccup somewhere, you can start cutting your expenses back and still come out. Whereas when you're starting out 200 and something dollars a head uh, or 200 and something dollars an acre, you have to continue pouring expenses in that cotton to, to, to try to salvage something. So that, that's peace of mind is, is, a, is a big thing. Uh, my herbicide problem or program for the conventional cotton, uh, the best herbicide I found money can buy is the cereal rye cover crop. Uh, I've been expanding that more and more. I'm trying to get 100% of my acres on it. Uh, We've been paying around $14 an acre for seed, a bushel of cereal rye. Uh, we generally I'm doing a conservation tillage, go in and cut my stalks behind the, the picker, uh, run my hipper, seed this out and run a do-all all in the same day. And then you're done, you're ready to plant next spring. Uh, got your beds and, and I, I don't figure the cost, the $14 an acre in my conventional acre production cost because I'm trying to get uh, cereal rye on 100% of my acres. Uh, it's just, it's, it's phenomenal for the weed control. And really what I did to justify the cereal rye is I quit ripping on my farm. And by doing soil, to soil protest and things such as that, we're actually seeing that cereal rye really does, I'd say at least 80% what a paratil does. Uh, so it, it pays for itself right there. And beyond that, you get the increased water infiltration from the roots, the weed control, it's just, Cereal rise for another talk, but I've been how, very how happy. You, on the cereal rye, when, when do you cut it out? How do you so plant I'll, it? I'll, you, oh, you yeah. good so I plant it in the fall, just whenever I can get in there. The stuff will germinate on this carpet. So if, if you can get it planted before <laughs> Christmas, it'll generally uh, come up. So on my, on my GMO uh, cotton, my herbicide program is I spray my, my burn down early. Uh, if I do have cereal rye out there, I don't put my Roundup in with my early burn down. Uh, then I go in two weeks before and spray uh, Reflex or, or somewhere before I plant it where I'm going to get a rain and spray Reflex with my, my Roundup. So I terminate my cover crop. Generally the cereal rise, you know, eight inches to a foot tall at that time. Uh, terminate my cover crop and get the Reflex out. Uh, I'm still using all the residuals with the cereal rye, just as insurance. And now, I mean, Reflex is $5 an acre. Uh, it's it's cheap insurance. A pint and a half, sir. A pint and a half. Yeah, what are we doing, Blake? I got my my. Right. Right. I can't call him a scout anymore. He got on to me. He's a certified crop consultant. <laughs> 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 so he went up whenever I had to start calling him that too. <laughs> but uh, then I spray Direx and Gramoxone behind the planter. Uh, I just I like that start clean, stay clean. I feel like with that. Gramoxone and Direx, you're killing everything that's out there and it's a lot easier uh, to start clean like that. Uh, then I'm going back once it comes up a couple weeks in. Uh, this is on the, the Liberty Leaf Glottal Cotton Spray and Liberty Roundup and Generic Duel. Uh, then coming back, spraying Liberty Roundup and Warrant. Uh, and then laying by with Caparol and MSMA. Uh, in a Roundup system, you know, obviously leaving off the the Liberty, doing everything else the same. Uh, sometimes I won't come back with the second shot of Liberty, even on the on the uh, Liberty tolerant, just because of the cost has been so high. Uh, so my conventional herbicide program, uh, it's really very similar. It's it's the same up and burn down, and then uh, all the way up to where we spray the Direx and Gramoxone behind the planter. Uh, then what I'm doing is just pretty quick after it comes up, I'm trying to get in there with dual uh, to, to have, uh, just because you, you just the, the pigweeds, even in a Roundup system, you're trying to keep them from coming up. But, but I found pretty much after we get a good stand, we're going in pretty quick, putting dual out. Uh, then I'm coming back a week to two after that and putting staple and select out. Uh, sometimes, if there's a if there's a little grass still when we put the dual out, we may put the select in with the dual. All three of these chemicals can can essentially be mixed. Sometimes I'll put dual and staple or dual and select, and sometimes, but but generally we're doing dual right after emergence, coming back with staple and select a couple weeks after that. I have found in my area staple won't kill a pigweed, but staple really does have good residual still on pigweeds in our area. I don't that I guess that comes with a caveat because the university says that's not the case, but I've, I've seen a lot of response. I think the problem is the staple's been so expensive that we're trying to spray all these other crops we can't afford 
uh, can't afford to spray staple, but uh, the, the residual has been good for me for pigweeds. Then I'm just coming back with warrant a week to two after the staple, and then again laying by with MSMA and Caparol. So uh, the herbicide cost comparison, uh, essentially I'm leaving the Roundup and Liberty out and putting 16 ounces of Select and two and a half ounces of Staple, that's $25. Uh, and on the GMO cotton, you know, you got two applications of Liberty, which Liberty's gonna be cheaper this year, I know. Uh, $37.50 total and two applications of uh, Roundup at $9. So I guess that, that's around $45 an acre versus $20 an acre for a Gautal Liberty Link versus conventional cotton. Uh, a little bit more on that. Uh, cost of staple and select is $25 an acre. Two shots of Roundup and Liberty, $55.50. So you're actually saving $20.50 an acre on chemical. I know it's probably not as good as two shots of Liberty, but but uh, even the field I didn't have zero rye on, I did not have a, and we've got bad, bad resistant pigweeds. We've had lots of issues with resistant pigweeds. Uh, I still did not have an overwhelming pigweed problem. Uh, we hand chopped my whole farm, and I, I a lot my fields weren't any worse on the conventional cotton fields than they were on uh, on my my Liberty fields. So. Uh, Cereal rye is the real, the real way to control weeds in the conventional cotton, though. Uh, but when you're doing a Glottal Liberty Link Bogard II, uh, the $20.50 an acre in, in chemical savings, this isn't anything to do with the seed savings, just raw chemical savings. Uh, that pays for more than a shot of invoke if you do have some issues with things other than pigweeds, uh, morning glory coffee beans, uh, I guess even cuckleberries and some, some issues such as that. Uh, and $20.50 pays for a lot of hand owing if you have, uh, have some escapes out there. Uh, and then when you go into a cost comparison of just straight round of ready cotton, uh, it's actually about $16 an acre more on the conventional weed control versus just uh, two shots of Roundup. But again, I found my fields are uh, cleaner than a conventional or cleaner in a conventional cotton scenario than a Roundup Ready cotton because uh, in our area, Roundup just really doesn't work on morning glories. We're getting so much resistant ryegrass and we're getting the uh, Roundups never worked on coffee beans good if you're growing on a little heavier ground. Uh, the staple and select actually kill those. So we're actually picking up, uh, we're picking up weeds that Roundup is missing in this program. You could always spray those chemicals on Roundup cotton, but I felt by the time you pay the tech fee, again, uh, the, the margins are so tight in cotton, you're talking an extra $30 in chemical for weed control. Uh, it, it just, it, it doesn't pencil out. Uh, the pesticide cost, it's, it's real simple. Uh, we're using two, one to two, uh, 10 ounce shots of Besiege. And that 10 ounce shot gives you a full rate of Prevathon and a full rate of Karate. So you're actually getting some uh, plant bug control out of it. Uh, no, I've never done more than two applications. Uh, sometimes we're able to get by with one. I think the Prevathon's given us two to three weeks of control every shot of worms. Uh, so uh, that's $32 an acre more on pesticide costs is kind of what I figure in. But we're getting some of that back in uh, plant bug control. Uh, one thing good about the UA222, it's extremely tolerable to plant bugs. Dr. Borland says it's one of the most tolerable varieties he's ever seen. Uh, a lot of times we're able to skip a plant bug application throughout the year, sometimes even twice on some of the fields. Uh, so, so that definitely uh, helps add some money back into the pot. So, your total pesticide cost difference. Uh, your conventional cotton worm, worm control is about $32 an acre more versus a transgenic Bogard. Uh, and your herbicide cost is, uh, it's uh, $16 an acre more than a regular Roundup Ready cotton and $20 less than you're, if you're doing two shots of Liberty in the Liberty system. Uh, I guess this is where we break it down a little more. Uh, <clears throat> conventional, with all that said, $100 an acre is cheaper seed cost. You're spending a little more on chemicals. Uh, conventional cotton is $52 an acre cheaper to grow than Roundup Ready cotton. That's kind of what I came up with on my farm. 
uh, plugging all the numbers in, uh, and it's about $88 an acre cheaper than the than the two shots of Liberty with your, your Roundup cotton. Uh, the University of Arkansas budget says that, that you can grow conventional cotton $60 an acre cheaper. I mean, that's pretty good. We're right there in between that. Uh, so I'd say on average, we're, we're somewhere in that $60 an acre uh, cheaper to grow range. Uh, now to the UA222. I say that's the only variety I have experience with. It's been such a good experience. I've resisted branching out and trying any others. Uh, just the, last year was my second year growing it. Uh, the first year I planted a 240 acre or 235 acre field and it averaged 1,430 pounds. Uh, last year I had a 200 that same 235 acre field averaged 1,503 pounds. Uh, Consecutive years. Two consecutive years. I'm growing in a third consecutive year because I did not have weed issues or anything. I mean, Dr. Boyle and a lot of people in this room actually went out to the field this year and, and it, before I'd hand hoed it, they really we didn't stop, did not have weed problems. Uh, I had 1,000 acres of UA222 this year. Approximate yields were around 1,220, 1,230 pounds an acre across a large acreage. Uh, most of the fields were between 1,150 and 1,250. Uh, I kind of went back and looked at my historical yields. I always figure on my farm, if I can average 1,200 pound cotton, I'm a very happy man. Uh, I feel like in this price environment, doing all the math, I can make money on 1,200 pound cotton. Uh, so that's, I met my goal with the 222. Uh, a great added bonus is it's got phenomenal fiber quality. And in these low price environments where we're selling cotton for loan and equities, I mean, there's a three and a half cent loan premium on 222. And that was the best of any of the cotton I grew. Uh, you know, a lot of this, we had a bunch of cotton go 49 and 50 cents this year, it had discounts. Uh, so you're talking a five and a half cent difference on 1200 pound cotton. Uh, that's a hundred and something dollars an acre. I mean, that's 150 pounds a yield. So uh, that's, a, that's another added bonus and, and a lot of, I would have had higher grades, but I actually, I think I had a few green leaves when I hit it with aim and got some leaf in my, in my sample. And that's, that's where most of my, uh, cause the staple's phenomenal, no, no mic issues. Uh, it's just a really high quality cotton. Uh, so then I went kind of to the University of Arkansas budgets just to double check myself. Uh, 2016, 1200 pound cotton, 73 cents and that's about where we are with the premium gen rebate and uh you know a 10 cent equity 10 and a half cent equity uh the university budget for i guess shows the same thing uh for the glottal everleaf bogard before rent at 1200 pound cotton at 73 cents is shows a hundred dollar an acre net return so you pay 150 dollars rent you're losing money uh, <laughs> On conventional cotton, it's showing a $160 return. Uh, $150 an acre rent, you're at least not losing money. Uh, I've always, on my farm, it's been my experience, if I can break even on a university budget, I'm making money. Uh, I don't know if that's <laughs> good or bad, but uh, actually I went back for 2015 and plugged in my, uh, a lot of my actual cost, and I'm not saying this is scientific, but but it was pretty close. I actually use a little less nitrogen than the university recommends and cut some costs to other places. But even with $100 an acre rent, 1,200 pound cotton at 72 cents last year, the university budget showed I had a $160 acre profit, $168 an acre profit. I don't know if it was that high, but I, I feel confident it was well over $100 an acre profit on 1,200 pound cotton. And in this, in this environment, uh, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Uh, the, the problem is, you take sixty dollars off of that, and you're talking thirty and forty dollars an acre. It, it just that's just too tight of margins for me to grow cotton. Uh, so uh, last year I had a thousand acres, I had eighteen hundred acres of cotton where, you, where this UA two two two, and this year I'm going to have two thousand out of thirty two hundred approximately. So I'm, I'm going to be uh, what is that sixty five percent UA two 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 conventional cotton. Uh, I feel like the real place for this, if the market ever settles in and we get some, some stability in the pricing markets, even if cotton goes back up to 85 cents, when it goes back up, we'll be optimistic. Uh, I feel like the real fit for this would be in a rotation 
behind mile over corn. I know a lot of people are in corn cotton rotations, two or three years of cotton, year of corn. Uh, I really think right behind corn where you don't have the weed pressure, do a year of conventional cotton, then a year or two of, of the transgenics, even the new dicamba cotton that's coming out, and then back to corn. Uh, so that, that's where I see the fit long term on my farm. It's just right now, uh, I'm trying to do anything I can to these margins to eke out a profit. Uh, so it's allowed me to stay profitable and, and still be a cotton farmer, because that's what I want to grow if I can. So uh, any questions? You, you use cereal rye even on your GMO. What, why, why you could get, what, why do you do that? The, the benefits of cereal rye, first, I don't have a massive amount of equipment for the acreage I farm. I try to work all my ground in the fall. I try to plant everything on hipped up beds or a large portion of my crop because of the irrigation or, or drainage. Crop just grows off a lot better. Uh, I've been experimenting with wheat and oats and other, other crops. Uh, the main reason I got into it so I could work ground in the fall, sow that out, and the beds will still be there in the spring. Uh, and to prevent the sand blasting of the young cotton. Uh, I started with cereal rye a couple years ago and just started seeing leaps and bounds benefits uh, because, like I say, you get the, the massive root system and a deep root structure that it's doing 78 to 80 percent of what a pear till does. Uh, I'm finding my cereal rye fields, I don't have to irrigate as much and we're able to skip an irrigation or two because of the water infiltration. You've got a massive root structure that dies and it leaves all those channels. Uh, and I'm not a cover crop guru or some people it's almost spiritual when it comes to cover crop. <laughs> I don't think that way, just the practical side of it. It's a lot easier to kill than wheat. And it, it gets, the, the problem with wheat and oats is, is you don't really get much size in the spring with that cereal rye. I mean, by early April, it's a foot tall and you can kill it and just, it's easy to plant into. Uh, but the main reason I started was for the, for the protection, for the, uh, to keep the beds from washing down. But it's just got so many positive attributes above and beyond the weed control. And, I mean, our weed pressure has been so high with these Roundup resistant uh, pigweeds, anything you can do can help. And I guess uh, university showing, you know, they're getting 85, 90% control of pigweeds with just cereal rye with no herbicide. So, I mean, that, that's that's the best thing out there. So. Nathan, did you say you handhold everything? I have a crew of uh, Hispanics and they go through my whole farm, turn on all. But you know, on last year on a, which I had a lot of corn in Milo, but on a 6,000 acres, I think I spent $10,000. So you know, $6 an acre. I mean, we're just getting the escapes. And I didn't plow any conventional cotton. I mean, I bought disc killers and got it all set up. Thought I was gonna have to go plow it, but we just, you know, we never did. Uh, and, it, and most of our chopping was around ends and risers and you know, out in the field, we just didn't have near as many issues. Did you have any problem with uh, when you rotated out of corn and milo with atrazine, or in the case of following cotton and staple, that your cereal rye was reflected by the previous uh, herbicide? Not, not yet. Uh, most of my ground are heavier soils. I mean, like a light soil for me is like 12 CDC. We go up to 30 on cotton. We go up to 30 above that. <laughs> so you know, we we don't have as many chemical carryover issues as people do. So. When, you, when you spray the caparol, how do you get it down to the cereal rye? How, how does it go through? I, mean, just I figure. If you're spraying even the reflex and then the Direx and Gramoxone behind the planter, by the time I'm spraying the Caprol laid by, it's it's laid over it. And but I figure on the residuals early, if I had a great stand of cereal rye, I probably wouldn't have to use both those residuals. But just you're going to have gaps out there, and that's where it's protecting those little inches of, that get sunlight. And I, I figure if the the rye will protect where it's matted over and, and sealed off the ground and you're just the residuals are kind of hitting the bare dirt so 